Hello, my name is Kelly Anton, PLC Training Instructor with PCC. In this lesson, I'm going to cover Global Data Blocks Part 1. I'm going to expand out the PLC and then expand out the Program Blocks folder. Then I'm going to select the Add New Block. When this Add New Block dialog box comes up, I'm going to select Data Block and give my Data Block a name. This is going to be a Global DB, and I'm going to give it the name DB underscore OPT for an optimized data block. So I will select OK, and this will open up the Data Block Editor. Once the Data Block Editor is open, in the Name column, I can enter in elements inside my Data Block. So the first element that I'm going to put in my Data Block is going to be called Start Command. I'm going to give this a data type of bool. I'm going to add another element in this data block, and this is going to be called flash bits. And the data type for this one is going to be the byte data type. I'm going to add in another element. This element is going to be going to be my speed, and the data type for this one is going to be an integer. So I'll select the integer data type for this entry. Add in another element. This is going to be called temperature, and the data type for this is going to be real. So you can see that I can mix and match data types within a data block. Let's add in one more element. This is going to be a name, and I'm going to select a string data type to represent you know, string characters. So I've got numeric values, and I also have string data. So I'm going to limit my string to 10 characters. What I will do is add in another element here. It's going to be called preset time, and I'm going to use the time type. This can be used as a preset value in a timer as an example. I'm going to create another element here. It's going to be called my array. The data type for this is going to be an array of, and then I can select what type of array it's going to be, or I can select a drop down here, and then I can fill in the individual parameters you know, for the array itself. So here I'll select the drop down, pick my data type, and I'm going to create an array of integers. So now with one definition, I can allocate many values. In any table editor, you can right click and select optimize width of all columns so that you can make all of the column headings fit. Next, I would like to show you the two elements of my array. So if I expand out the my array that I created, you'll actually see there's two elements underneath. So the first one would be index zero, the second one would be index one. Next, I am going to copy the data block that I have here. So I'm going to right click on it and select copy, right click, and then paste in the program blocks folder. The first data block that was created was an optimized data block. This next data block, what we're going to do is we're going to rename the copy of the data block that was just pasted and call it STD for standard access data block. Next, I'm going to right click on the data block and select the properties for the block. There's an attribute that is called optimized block access. So I'm going to uncheck that, and this is going to change it from optimized access to standard access. Optimize is name only access. When I do standard access, now you'll see that there's actually going to be an offset column in the data block. I'm going to right click on the properties of the standard block access and go up to the general area. Here I'm going to select manual so that I can change the data block number because I can't have two DB1s in the program. So I'm just going to change it to two so it's a unique number. You will see that the offset column has not been filled in yet. Once I compile the program, then it will fill in the offsets for the individual elements within the data block. Next, I will open up the main program block in the project tree. Once this block opens up, I would like to collapse all of the networks from the previous exercises. So I'm going to go up and collapse all networks, and then expand out network 6. Now, to be able to show data block addressing, I'm going to use a move instruction for that purpose. So I'm going to drag a move instruction in. I'm going to show both standard access and optimized access, so I'm going to add an additional output pin to the move instruction. On the input side, I'm going to select the clock byte that we defined earlier, and I'm going to move that into a data block address. So I'm going to highlight my optimized data block address, and I'm just going to use the drag and drop method. So I'm just going to drag flash bits from the details view in, and then you can see the optimized access. Now I'll highlight the standard access block and do the same thing for the flash bits from the standard data block. So you can see the difference between the addressing between the two. I will add in another move instruction. I'm going to use an 
um, empty box instruction and just type in the instruction that I'm looking for. So I'm going to use the move. This time I, I will add in another additional pin, but on the input side I'm going to use the analog pot value. So I'm going to select pot 1. And now instead of doing the drag and drop method, I will just start typing the first few letters of a data block. So I'll use my optimized access and then I'll drill into the data block to pick the speed tag. I will do the same thing for the standard access. So now I'll start typing the first few letters of the data block, select my data block, and then drill in and select the speed tag. So with the standard access, you have an absolute address as well as name address, and an optimized access, you just use names only. Next, I'm going to change my zoom level to be 120% to make things a little bit easier to see. I'll save my project up till this point. Highlight my program blocks folder and select download to device. So this is going to compile my PLC programming at this point and allow me to load that into the controller. Once the loading of the PLC program is complete in the program, I can go into the project tree and I can select one of the data blocks for monitoring. So I will press my monitor all. This happens to be the optimized data block. I can modify values and I can view values. So if I right click on a field, I can select modify operand and I can type in a new value for that field. So in the modify value column for this Boolean tag, I'm going to enter in one and press OK. For Boolean values, you can also double click and it'll bring up a toggle value command as well. So if I go to the temperature, I can right click modify operand and enter in a real value now for this value. So I'm entering in 80.3 for the temperature. I will turn the monitoring off. Then I will save my project and I will go offline. And this concludes the lesson on global data blocks part one.